-hmm. So thanks for that. In terms of holistic uh, stuff, and I've already uh, read enough of your, you know, kind of brief. Uh, do you think you have uh, like the like individual team members that could be helpful to set up a team for this project, or should I try and assemble that team for you? Yeah, look, this project is just an, uh, well, I've got it pretty well fleshed out in my head way beyond that because I spent five years doing this for autism and I know all the relevant data sets and other things like that. Yeah. I just don't have the capacity to do a team and I don't care who does it. Um, mm -hmm. I think it will be incredibly useful beyond COVID, but logically we can't do pharma around the world. We can't do vaccines around the world for 18 months. This is the only way that we can mitigate deaths really yeah. at scale. Um, Makes sense. And if there's enough yeah. literature just around vitamin D that you have a big use case. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me actually show you something. I'm going to share my screen real quick here. And basically, because um, the things that you mentioned that really resonated with me are the holistic approach and understanding of the complex systems thinking, right? And, um, you know, it's, it's actually a very hard thing to uh, think about and apply critical thinking to. And many, even current researchers or biologists and other people are missing out that aspect. And, you know, uh, a couple of days ago, whenever the um, uh, U.S. government cleared the use of hydroxychloroquine, I just realized how crazy that is. And I was like, wow, like they're recommending to use this drug without any like systemic analysis or evidence on the adverse effects of, you know, what it could lead to. And I was like, wow, like we need to do something ASAP. And I created this idea. Uh, and I think we have kind of a team formed around it, but haven't yet formalized. And basically I listed out mm -hmm. the side effects of proposed uh, treatments and the context that FDA uh, approved emergency use of chloroquine based treatment, the goal, um, like why it's important, the audience, and I included government level policymakers, White House to improve government agency protocols. So here you go. Um, I just don't know how, how to reach them yet, but they're definitely the audience. And here we basically have some approach on how to start this, this project. But that's exactly the same thing that you're talking about in terms of um, understanding the second and third order effects of things that influence our health and basically trying to uh, expose that as a knowledge base to relevant people, right? Uh, yeah, exactly that. And, you know, you've had protein folding and most of it, most of the kind of um, protein matching analysis and the network science analysis on this has been just for the pharmaceutical sector. Um, like I said, I like vitamin D because it's the one example of something that is widely prescribed because most of us are deficient in it in the West and it mm -hmm. increases the chance of influenza and ARDS and everything else through scientifically proven studies. Um, and as you said, like nobody's actually quite sure how chloroquine works. Exactly. Which, is, which I think is very interesting. Um, the main mechanism though that they think is that it's a zinc ionophore, which means that it increases cellular uptake of zinc. But there's a lot of things that increase cellular uptake of zinc that aren't prescription medicine. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I mean, yeah, there are hypotheses on, you know, the receptor binding, there are hypotheses on, you know, uh, damaging ability to replicate RNA. And there are many hypotheses, but they're just hypotheses. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is quite common as well. For example, within the autism community, um, there's a big movement against yeast and nystatin uh, mm. to be used as an antifungal. Um, and so people think it's due to yeast overgrowth. The reality is that it's actually calcium iron blocking in the brain. Um, mm -hmm. and you can prove that <laughs> once you actually look at all the data uh, with a critical eye. Um, because the yeast data doesn't stack up, but the calcium iron data does. So I think that, you know, th these are kind of quite related. Within the kind of chloroquine thing, this is difficult. Data doesn't stand up by itself, unfortunately, because it needs to be packaged and translated. Um, 
especially when you have data poor and small pipelines. So chloroquine right now has been put forward. Why? Because it works okay. For some people. Like, <laughs> For people working least. with uh, certain governments uh, at least. Yeah, it, it works. No, well, well, I mean, it's contraindicated for certain heart conditions and things like that, but it's actually a pretty safe drug, relatively speaking, if you take the right dose. If you take too much, you're screwed. But they've been using it from day one in Iran, and they've been using it actually quite a lot in Italy. It's not a panacea, right? Yep. Like, it's not going to cure the world, but politically, it's very useful to say that it would. Um, mm. So from a risk-reward basis, this has happened. But this is what makes it very interesting because for the first time you're seeing people actually say we can do first principles medicine you know and a lot of people take supplements and do all sorts of things without a first principle analysis when in reality a lot of this stuff is hugely interconnected because the two stages of the disease that we see in COVID-19 is the viral part and then the immune dysregulation part where your body gives itself uh, chemo effectively mm -hmm. right that second part is the most difficult and it increases fatality rates by seven times. And the number of things you can do for that are huge. Um, and that's what makes it really interesting because by aggregating, like I said, scientific data around this from the large data set that exists there, as well as additional data sets, you know, we have the reactor and project and all sorts of other things I'm sure you're seeing in terms of pathway analysis and everything else. That is basically leads to interventions from eating properly to you know taking supplements and other things that could make a really meaningful difference not only in the west but also in the developing world um, yeah and, and i, I actually agree that needs to be done. there is the underrepresentation of even basic measures when it comes to your health and that includes having enough sleep having quality sleep drink enough water, uh, managing stress, and eating good food. You know, those seem so basic that people just counterintuitively ignore that. But in reality, just, you know, having a, a nice supply of vitamin D through your food or, you know, exposing yourself to sun, all of these things add up and holistically make a huge difference. Yeah, and you know, I think this is like I said, it's especially important now because first responders aren't getting it, right? Mm -hmm. And so their vitamin D levels will be dropping, and we can prove just from that one thing that that happens. Well, then what else are they missing, right? What else could we use to act as prophylaxis without giving them heavy duty drugs? Because some of the drugs do have big side effects. Chloroquine is actually relatively okay if your heart can kind of take it. Um, but some of the other stuff being trialed has big side effects. Um, like, for example, Caletra just messes up your taking of any other type of medicine because it affects your cytochrome P450. Um, you know, so I think that we do need to have that. And we need to be aware as well, the known unknowns, like, uh, you know, I've talked to some of the top virologists on this and top epidemiologists, kind of top doctors. We still don't actually know what this does to your lungs. Yeah. So there is the theory that, you know, it destroys your lung tissue and things like that. But because of the increased amount of iron in your blood supply, it might actually just be kicking the iron out of your blood cells. So it might be your blood hitting your lungs and then it's turning up in the brain and all sorts of other areas. So the closer we can kind of do preventative measures and treatments that operate within what our body has anyway, mm -hmm. you know, the more natural side of things versus pharmaceuticals, probably the better it will be. And a classic example of that is that for the SARS vaccine, uh, they had a very promising one that uh, stopped SARS at the start, but then if you got SARS, it basically destroyed your lungs. Mm -hmm. And then you found that out later on rhesus monkeys. Because we don't know, because things that work at the start don't work at the end and vice versa. Exactly. But if you're just improving your natural modulation, then that makes a lot more sense. And this is exciting as well as a project because it's a project that could become a product, mm -hmm. right? Because the first person that does this or the first entity or team that does this properly, you suddenly got a basis for scientifically proven personalized medicine without... Uh, without what? 
And that's huge in a world of kind of people taking and popping supplements for no particular reason, right? Yeah. Well, people take supplements, but they're not really sure what the interactions are and others. And so <laughs> I sent that link as an example, because that's the um, Allen Institute, obviously, that came up with the CORD-19 data set. Mm -hmm. They've nicely mapped out all the drug interactions of supplements and the interactions of supplements with each other. So there's already an existing transformer model on that. Mm -hmm. And there is a, actually a pretty cool project called Casually that kind of tries to do that in terms of investigating uh, casual uh, effects of uh, certain substances yeah. and diseases. Uh, we just got a count today, so I'll, I'll have to explore that. But yes, I fully agree with you on the same page. This is really exciting. Let me think about how to package this for uh, various uh, people in our community to uh, basically get on board. I think um, there is something huge in here. I'll basically, we have this new Trello board called Exciting Ideas, and I'll put it in there, and I'll add the, the recording of this call just for everyone's context, and let's see what happens. Yeah, could you add the recording of the part where I'm talking about this as opposed to the other stuff, because it's not public yet. The yeah, I'll, WHO and the I'll, UN stuff. So if you can trim it, that'd be great. I'll cut the part that is specific to holistic. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And um, like I said, I have like I know holistic medicine from taking a very data intensive approach to taking my son from scratching in the wall to his fingernails bled to full time school. Um, mm -hmm. and working kind of on this because the actual immune pathways are very similar for autism, Alzheimer's and COVID, weirdly enough. They're all mm. information-based pathways. Yeah. So I'm happy to, this is something close to my heart. It's just, unfortunately, I can't lead on this project yeah. because and I got the other thing, <laughs> which is taking up 18, 19 hours of my day, as you can imagine, right? Yep. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, I'm not precious about it. If anyone wants to take the lead, they are welcome to, and I will support as much as I can. And I can bring in a whole wealth of knowledge on it. But Let's do it, man. Sounds exciting. Uh, yeah. I'll have to jump to another call. But thank you so yeah. much for, for having a call with me. I'll create uh, the fellow cards and add you to those. And yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, let's get done. And good congratulations on all the work that you've done so far. And I think you're going to do some great work in the future. Let's kill this little bastard virus. <laughs> for sure. 100%. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bye. man. Bye. Cheers, buddy. Bye.